now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite online bookseller. Some black women like to say black men are in the category of being someone like a pookie, even though that black man's background doesn't fit that narrative. And two examples of this are actor Corey Hardrick and musician DDG, who are oftentimes demonized by this group of black women as being like Pookie. However, if you take a critical look at the, both of these black men's backgrounds, they basically are the kind of so-called good brothers that many black women say that they want, but it, because those black men are out here and they are trying to take care of business, what many do in this group is try to make these guys out to be the bad guy of the story. And an example of this is with actor Corey Hardrick, who has had to deal with a lot of misandry from this group of black women after his wife, Tia Maori wound up divorcing him and wound up leaving him because she wanted to experience the world of dating. Now, many of these black women wanted to make Corey Hardrick out to be the bad guy of this story. However, even Tia Maori herself said that Corey Hardrick did not cheat on her, did not abuse her, and did not mistreat her in any way, shape, or form. And Corey Hardrick basically was a guy who was looking to be a husband and a father to his children. That's what Corey Hardrick was trying to do. However, you've got some black women out here who want to push misandristic narratives and demonize Corey Hardrick as a pookie. And as they look to demonize Corey Hardrick as a pookie, they want to sit there and try to find ways to make Corey Hardrick look like less than a man, even though he has presented himself as an example of a man of character. Now, when we look at Corey Hardrick's background, a lot of people want to try to say that he was living off Tia Maori, but that was never the case at all. No, if you look at Corey Hardrick's IMDB background and all of the credits for all of his work, it's clear that Corey Hardrick is a working actor, and he's been a working actor for many years. And because a lot of people want to try to compare him to Tia Maori, what they want to say that he is that he is less successful than Tia Maori. However, that's not the case at all, because success works differently in the entertainment industry for men than it does for women. And that's basically how it works, again, in the world of work for men and women. A lot of times, women will get a lot of success early on because they're young and attractive and in their prime. And while that man may be at the same age, he may not be in the same place at the same time, but that's basically because, again, the world works differently for men than it does for women. And a man isn't in his prime when he is young. No, when a man is young, like Corey Hardrick was when he first met Tia Maori, he's basically starting everything in his life because he's a young man. And as a young man, he's got to work his way up and build himself up. And that's what Corey Hardrick was doing over the years as he was involved with Tia Maori. He was slowly building himself up and developing his craft and working his way up the ladder of the entertainment industry. And he was doing that starting out the way every working actor does. Every working actor starts out with guest spots and bit roles and extra work. This is how actors first start out. And then this eventually goes from being those the extra work bit roles and guest spots to eventually you getting supporting work in TV and film, and then you go from working supporting work to lead supporting work, which is a supporting actor role, and then eventually what you do is after you've done the supporting work, you then start to get lead actor jobs, and this is what takes time for a man, because oftentimes when a guy is young, he's basically a rookie. He doesn't really have those connections because you start out 
usually being a B-list celebrity or a D-list celebrity, and you have to start working your way up, making connections with people, and as you make connections, eventually you start to go from being a D-list celebrity to with a D-list agent to graduating to becoming a C-list celebrity with a C-list agent, then you work your way up to the B level and get a B-list agent, and then eventually you wind up getting the A-list agent, and then you start getting A-list jobs. You have to work your way up in, th in, in the entertainment industry the same way a man has to work his way up when he's on one of these jobs. A guy will start out in a job at an entry level and then he will graduate to the next level and then all the way up to he gets to management and if he continues to persevere in that career eventually he will reach the executive level after grad and, and, and when he gets to the executive level that's where he starts to again see the, the level of his success and that's what many black women don't understand about Corey Hardrick is that he basically worked his way up the entertainment industry. And while he's worked up again, he's not at the level where he's actualized himself because at 42, 43 years old, Corey Hardrick is now at a point where he's at his physical prime. And as he's at his physical prime, he's in a place where he's now ready to take on those lead roles. And that's what happened with Corey Hardrick after Tia Mowry divorced him because she wasn't patient. And really, she was also just extremely insecure because as Corey was coming into his prime, Tia was fading out of hers. And what she wanted to do was divorce Corey Hardrick to say that she wanted to experience dating. But what she didn't want to experience was this man going to start entering his prime, actualizing his potential as she was fading. That's what she was, I believe, wanted to divorce Corey Hardrick for because she couldn't stand the idea of this man again being on a point where he was actualizing himself to a high level and couldn't stand the fact that this man was getting ready to take a leadership role as a man and be able to take his position as a man and be the front and center of the family. Everything was fine when she was front and center and was in her prime years when she was younger, but now that she's older and basically hit the wall and now is starting to see her looks fade and starting to see her hair gray, she's looking to try to get away from Corey Hardrick because she can't stand being in the presence of a man who is about to again enter his prime and start to actualize his potential and if he continues on this course and doesn't do anything dumb after he's made this five picture deal and made this money and if these films do get some box office he can now be on that level that Jonathan Majors was just about to be on before that before Grace Jabari wound up torpedoing his chances where he could possibly be on the road to becoming on the level of Denzel Washington and Will Smith and be in a place where his head is in the right space, his head being in that place where he is mentally focused and able to focus on taking himself to that level of superstardom. That's where Corey Hardrick is headed to if he doesn't make any mistakes like getting into it with his ex-wife and wind up in a domestic violence situation, just take goes out here and takes care of his kids and takes care of his business. He is on his way to becoming on that level of becoming a superstar man, the same way that Denzel Washington and Will Smith used to be. And he's in his prime and again at that place. But you'll have some black women out here, what they want to do is say that Corey Hardrick is a pookie and is basically coming from the streets and living off Tia Mowry's money, when in actuality what's happening with Corey Hardrick is he's been out here working all this time, building himself up. He got some support from Tia Mowry in the beginning as related to his career, but after that he began to make his own efforts, and as he made his own efforts as a man, he started to again actualize that potential, and that's where a lot of black women get it twisted, because they are looking for these ready-made brothers who already got all their money and looking for these like rappers and ball players and don't understand how success works for a man they don't understand how it works and that's why they put Corey Hardrick in the category of Pookie because they never had a father in their life to show them the road to success 
or to see their father climbing that ladder to a road to success, and because they never had a dad in their life to show her or how men work, that's why they can say Corey Hardrick is a pookie because they never had a man in their life to show them how things work for men, and that's why they wind up sitting here demonizing this black man for going out here and working on his success and want to make him up to be the bad guy of the story when in actuality it's their twisted perception of black men that has it where they see this black man as not being the man he's supposed to be and the man working the way a man works in God's order towards achieving success. Now, another example of this is musician DDG, who was involved with, mus with actress Halle Bailey. Now, DDG, a lot of people want to make him to be the bad guy of the story and want to say that DDG is the one who made Halle Bailey a baby mama. However, when you really start to look at the story, you start to see that DDG actually is another one of these quality brothers that many black women want to complain about and not being there. However, when we look at DDG's background, he's been working behind the scenes trying to make things positive for himself, even though he grew up in, in, in places, I believe like Detroit, where things are rough and saw one of his friends die. He was a guy who basically used YouTube as a tool to build up his music business because he was he graduated high school and he didn't want to go to college, I believe, and he started going out here and making his music, built up a platform of over 3 million subs on YouTube and built up a platform for his music and was out here doing things as related to building up his own success. However, because he got involved with Halle Bailey and Halle Bailey wound up getting pregnant with him, what they want to do is say that DDG is a pookie. However, there's no nothing pookie about DDG at all. No, DDG is just an, a brother out here looking to, again, make a living the same way Corey Hardrick was trying to make a living as an actor and work his way up as related to things, and DDG went out here and put in all of his own efforts towards his own success, and as he put in those efforts towards his success, what he was doing was building himself up, but you'll have the mainstream media trying to demonize DDG, trying to say that he's a pookie, but he's not a pookie at all, and the business talked about this in one of his live streams. He talked about how DDG had worked his way up, and sadly, because he had been working on himself all this time, he couldn't see his own value. And because he couldn't see his own value, he couldn't see that Halle Bailey was basically looking to try to find a nice, big, fat, juicy simp to basically leech off of. Now, Halle Bailey had gotten a lot like Tia Maori was in her prime in when she was younger and as she was in her prime basically she had gotten a lot of deals as related to Hollywood and had gotten one of her biggest deals which was the film The Little Mermaid. Now Halle Bailey thought that this film The Little Mermaid was going to make her a star because she was going to be playing a black being a black woman playing Princess Ariel. However the film wound up performing poorly at the box office and was getting cooked and roasted even before that. And what happened with Halle Bailey is that she went from being a rising star to wind up becoming a, a star that was on decline. And she was on decline because the studios basically went out here and they just mismanaged her career by investing her in this film that cost, I believe, anywhere from $300 million or more and thought that, th that she was going to make this film into a blockbuster. However, the film did not turn out to be the huge hit that the studios expected it to be. And because they, the, studio, the film did not become the hit that the studios expected it to be, they started to look at Halle Bailey and say, see her as not as a bankable performer. And this is where possibly Disney started to think about releasing Halle Bailey as related to their projects. And many of the other studios and record companies did so as well. And because they started to look at her 
her and started to see her as not being somebody that was bankable, what they did was possibly look to release Halle Bailey. And in, in Halle Bailey's efforts to try to stay relevant, what she did was try was look for a guy she could go out here and leech onto. And that's basically possibly how she wound up getting involved with DDG. Now I go in depth on how these type of deals happen all the time in my screenplay book, All About Marilyn, where I talk about how Marilyn Marie was on a developmental deal. And when the film failed, they want the studio wound up releasing her. And that happens all the time because if you cannot prove you can make money for the studios or the record companies, they just get go out here and just stop contacting you. They stop calling you and you're just out there. And as you're out there, you have to try to find a way to make a living. And what Halle Bailey did was, again, get involved with DDG. And as she got involved with DDG, who was a rising star as a black man, what she was looking to do was try to leech onto this guy because she was basically a fading star. But the tabloids tried to make it out like DDG was the pookie or he was the bad guy, even though he was the guy on the rise. And as Halle Bailey looked to, again, try to hold, leech on to this guy to try to maintain her relevancy in the entertainment industry, this is where I believe she possibly wound up getting pregnant by DDG, hoping to, that by having this guy's baby, she could be able to get access to his economic resources and also continue to make herself relevant by making him out to be the bad guy of the story as the baby daddy when in actuality she was the one who was looking to try to hold on to the last five or ten seconds of her fame because the studios basically had wanted nothing to do with her because one she already proved that she's no longer bankable at the box office after the failure of the little mermaid to her, her star was fading with the record labels who had already seen that they could go out here and find other performers who could go out here and do what she could do and basically they could make more money with them so when they looked at when Halle Bailey looked at things again she was looking to make DDG out to be the bad guy but she was the bad guy herself and after as things were going on people were thinking Oh, the DDG is the bad guy, but it was Halle Bailey out to make herself into a baby mama, out to make herself into the baby mama to basically fit a narrative that many black women would sympathize with, a narrative that many black women would go out here and sympathize with because they would identify with Halle Bailey being the baby mama the same way they would identify with Tia Maori being the one who divorced her husband and said that the and tried to make the husband out to be a bad guy because after imbibing 40 to 50 years of this misandristic gynocentric media like the Oprah Winfrey show that demonizes heterosexual black men black women will sit there and make a black man out to be a similar to a pookie when in actuality when we start to look peel back the layers of their story when we start to peel back the layers of their story we start to see that these black men are not the bad guys of the story no but these black men were basically working brothers and working to climb up the ladder of the of success in the entertainment industry i mean in the case of corey hardrick here's a guy was on his way trying to be, get to the A-list and worked his way up to the A-list. And in the case of DDG, you've got a guy who's basically gotten himself YouTube famous and social media famous, similar to other black men who've gone out here and done this on social media. And as these black women go out here, they want to make these black guys the bad guys of the story, but they're not the bad guys of the story at all. No, neither of these guys are the bad guy of the story. No, these are the kinds of brothers who are out here putting in that work, making that effort. And again, in both cases, are again, quality brothers that many women say that they want. These are the kind of quote unquote good men that some black women say that they want. But many people don't see how these women went out here and did these guys dirty. No, they don't want to see how they did these guys dirty. And the mainstream media won't let you see how they did these guys dirty. No, they want to put them in the pookie box. And many spellbound black women want to fit them in that box because they want to be accepted by white society as the bad guy of the story. And that makes them feel 
feel comfortable, but the reality is, is that these brothers are unjustly being demonized as the bad guy of a story, the bad guys of a story that they are not really a part of. No, what's happened in the case of Corey Hardrick, I'll repeat it once more, is he was a working actor working his way up, and now that he's finally up there, what people want to do is try to tear him down. And the same thing with DDG, who didn't know his value as a man. He went out here and he got involved with Halle Bailey, who was on the decline, thought he had a hot one. But that hot one basically wanted to, again, bring her dysfunction to him because she basically messed up her bag and is now looking to try to get a hold of his bag through child support and looking to try to jam him up. And in both cases, we, we are told that the black men are the bad guys of the story, but they have done nothing evil at all. No, this isn't a case of Ray Ray or Pookie. No, this is a case of people projecting their ideas onto these black men, projecting their ideas onto these black men to make them the villain of the story and make them the villain of a story, again, that was created way back about 40, 50 years ago with stuff like like the like the feminist culture that was that was poisoning black women's minds and reinforced by shows like the Oprah Winfrey show movies like the color purple and waiting to exhale which want to make it like every black man is a no good black man and that whole perception of black men keeps us from seeing the good brothers out there who are taking care of business and keeps us from seeing the truth about the black men out here who are trying to do things right that's what's really sad about the whole story of of Corey Hardrick and DDG is that we don't see that these guys are not the bad guys of the story but are the kind of brothers that most black women would want as husbands and and fathers to their children now, if you want to learn why so many black women have this poisoned frame of thinking, you can pick up my book, Why 70% of Black Women Are Single, on Amazon.com, along with my other book, The Woman Crisis, and both of those books will explain how so many black women got this whole frame of thinking to not think of black men as leaders and heads of their families and not be able to work with black men in relationships and this how this leads to them winding up in a paradigm of failure that keeps them single for the rest of their lives and you can find both of those books on amazon.com in paperback and kindle format you can also find them at other online booksellers like draft the digital google play barnes and noble and big box retailers like walmart and target and if you want to see some positive examples of healthy relationships between black men and black women, you can pick up much of my fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, such as my novels A Recipe for Success, Spellbound, The Legendary Mad Matilda, and Spinsterella. And you can also pick up books like The Temptation of John Haynes and The Thetas. Again, all these books show you healthy relationships between black men and black women and show you a model for how relationships are actually supposed to work between a black man and a black woman. And if you want to see me make more videos talking about entertain the entertainment industry and relationships between black men and black women, you can drop a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle, All About Marilyn. Learn all about the struggles of a faded former teen sitcom star in this absolutely fabulous five-star screenplay. Get All About Marilyn in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com today. Now available in paperback and e-readers, All About Nikki, a fabulous first season. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air meets Clueless in this absolutely fabulous African-American 1990s teen sitcom. Get all 13 episodes of All About Nikki, the fabulous first season, in paperback and e-readers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.